Sculpting has changed the way I look at design. Today I want to revisit something I've made about 50 times before, a crane hook. Designing one of these without sculpting used to take serious effort due to the method we used. Because the shape is changing in both direction and cross section, the most likely feature choice is a loft. This loft would require a ton of sketches made at odd angles, requiring a reference plane for each. Using sculpting in Fusion 360 enables me the freedom to alter direction and cross-sectional area with intuitive controls. But when I started this, I didn't include enough faces along the length. After all, it's hard to know how many I'd need at the onset. So at this point, how do I add more faces? Easy. If you click and hold the Alt key as you drag a translate handle, it'll do just that. From there, it's a bit of rinse and repeat until I get to the end. At the end here, I want it flat, so I'll use a trick Taylor taught me. If you set the scale manipulator in that direction to zero, it'll flatten that edge. Then we'll start fine tuning the shape. Using controller command, I can select as many edges, faces, or vertices at the same time to help capture the design intent. And to select a loop of edges, something you'll do quite often, you can double click on one of the edges from the loop. Now, I left the end unfinished because the main reason for this quick tip was to show you a couple of different ways to close it off. One such way is to use the fill hole right in the sculpting environment. With the end loop pre-selected, I'll jump right into this. And right away this command fills the hole with one of three modes. The first is reduce star, and after that I can explore the other options, such as fill star or the last, collapse. Determining which is best depends on what you want to do from here. But let's explore another option. This time I'll switch to the patch environment using the awesome new keyboard shortcut of control or command bracket key. And here I'll select, well, the patch command. At first it doesn't appear that I've done much, but that's because of the selected continuity. With the current type, connected, it closes the hole with a flat face. Instead, let's try one of the other two options, like tangent, which will make this patch tangent to the selected faces at a G1 continuity, or curvature, which like the sculpt workspace ensures a G2 continuity. For more on what this actually means, check out the link below, there's some great info there. At the end however, I'll patch this with the connected style and use a boundary fill to turn this into a solid. So I can show you the last method, using that old fashioned loft command. Before I jump into using the loft, I'll create an offset plane from the flat face at the end. Make the simplest of sketches possible, a point, then initiate the loft tool. From there, I can select the two profiles that will make up this loft, the end face and the sketch point. Right away it looks off, but that's just because I need to adjust some important settings. Tangency control cannot be overlooked in this command. For the point, I can make it sharp or point tangent, the better of the two in this case. And for profile one, I can use similar options as we found in the patch tool. Anyway, I hope this helps. This was from a user submitted question, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Cheers.